Welcome back to Battleship Systems. Today we're talking about how to build a battleship, specifically the planning phase of the ship's hull. Please check the errata page in the description. To build a battleship, you first have to know how big it's going to be, its displacement tonnage, how many guns it's going to have, and how big they will be, the vessel's maximum design speed, armor thickness, and the overall dimensions of the ship. The ship's designer knows these requirements and sketches a preliminary design from these concepts. The preliminary design or study consists of only a couple of orthographic drawings or perspectives. The branch of the Navy that was responsible for creating these sketches was the Bureau of Construction and Repair. In June of 1940, this would be consolidated into what would be called the Bureau of Ships and even later on, Naval Ship Systems Command, or NAVC. The Bureau of Construction and Repair had the most important role in at least the initial planning phases of all battleships. I'll refer to them as CNR for the rest of this video. CNR would periodically release many sketches, or schemes, that would be released periodically in what were known as Spring Styles catalogs. Each scheme would have its advantages and disadvantages. Some would have more displacement and more armor, but less speed, while others had more speed and less armor. The designs would then be voted on by the Navy General Board, while all while different requirements were debated amongst the members. Certainly one of the biggest requirements the board had to contend with is the Washington Naval Treaty of 1922 that limited battleship displacement to 35,000 tons. Once the scheme is chosen, then it's back to CNR to come up with the rest of the preliminary design. This usually involves creating a multitude of design estimates such as stability calculations, metacentric radii, center of buoyancy, displacement, and inertia calculation. CNR would draw up basic fire control equipment layouts, armor plating, plumbing, floors, and compartment access diagrams. Other Navy departments, such as the Bureau of Engineering, would draw up the ship's electrical and engine diagrams, while the Naval Gun Factory would draw up plans for the turrets and mounts. All of those documents make up a contract plan that is sent out to several shipyards for bidding. It's important to note that these are not workable plans. CNR is counting on the winning shipyard to use their extensive ship fitting experience to figure out the functional designs and send back some of those blueprints. So what is a blueprint anyway? Blueprints come from technical drawings made by draftsmen that show how to develop something. So how are these drawings made? Please keep in mind I have never taken a drafting class, but I'll try to go over the basics of technical drawing. Since drawings need to be to scale, we need to have a way to draw straight parallel lines. A universal drafting machine combines all the functions of a parallel ruler, a protractor, and a scale. That's how blueprints are able to have lines that look so perfectly aligned with everything else. But not everything in a blueprint is a line. For curves and circles, you would use a compass and dividers. But how do designers communicate something as intricate as a ship's hull to others in the form of a drawing. Sometimes you just have to see the real thing to know how it all fits together. Before sending the contract plans out, CNR will create a physical wooden half model of the battleship's hull. It is with this wooden half model that measurements can be taken to accurately complete the curved lines. Plate seams are drawn directly to this half model as well as the frames. They would then transfer this drawing from the wood model to a series of marks by holding a piece of paper tight against the hull at a number of positions, called stations, and marking the plating seams on the piece of paper. They would then measure the points on each strip of paper and place them in something called a table of offsets. The next step is to fare all the lines in a drawing. So what does it mean to fare a line? It basically means drawing a curved line that smoothly intersects with a series of points. How do draftsmen do that on paper? They bend a piece of wood over graph paper, making sure the wood intersects with every point of the table of offsets. The wood is then held in place by these lead spline whale weights. They then trace the wood with a pen, and now they have a perfectly fared line. Once the plates themselves are drawn, you have what is called a shell expansion. 
This gives us the shape of every plate, but it doesn't tell us how the plates are supposed to be bent. For that, we have to draw more lines on our model and take some more measurements. First, you would take a pencil and hold it at a fixed distance from the ship's center line, and then move it the entire length of the hull, keeping that pencil the same distance from the center line. This is called a buttock line. Next, lines are drawn at a fixed distance from the bottom of the battleship, and these are called water lines. Think of water lines as if you were to dip the model in water while standing up. You are tracing where the level of the water meets the hull. You would then use a special measuring instrument to find how far out from the ship's center line and how high from the bottom of the model the water line meets with the butt line. The distance out from the ship's keel or baseline that the hull intersects with a point is called a half breadth offset. The distance from the bottom of the ship to the point is called height offset. Two more table of offsets are created from these values. CNR draws a fair form starting with the half breadth plan from the half breadth offsets and the shear plan from the height offsets. After the two plans have been fared, they can create the body plan, which on the left is the view looking aft from the forward end of the ship and on the right is the aft view looking forward. The body plan contains the actual curves of every plate in the hull. The designers then trace these plans to form other drawings, the most important being the general arrangement. The general arrangement contains profile drawings of the ship along with every deck, platform, and any other major ship structures. Let's see how the two previous plans are used to create the body plan. If we look at the half breadth plan, station one intersects with the forecastle deck slightly beyond the six foot buttock. Moving to the shear plan, we see that at station one, the forecastle deck is slightly lower than the 32 foot water line. That puts our point on the body plan right about here. That's not enough points to fair line, so let's get some more points. Station one intersects with the main deck slightly below the four foot buttock. At station one, the main deck is slightly below the 24 foot water line. Here is the buttock and water line intersection point in our body plan. Since the keel of a ship is always a flat surface, if we bend a flat piece of wood upward and make it intersect with the two points, this is the fared line we will get. Okay, so now that we have our drawings, we have to have a way of letting others know what it is they're looking at. To you and I, this could look like a battery charging panel, but to someone else, it could be their father-in-law. To solve this, we place a title block in the lower right-hand corner. Some title blocks look really nice because the letters are perfectly straight. This is done with mechanical lettering. Draftsmen use tools like my Kufel and Esther lettering kit to draw letters on their drawings. Notice how these letters are clearly drawn with mechanical lettering. Sometimes draftsmen use freehand lettering. You have to be careful using freehand because some detail of the drawing is lost during the blueprinting process and it may be hard to read in future subpar copies. Every draftsman has their own style of freehand and techniques used to distinctify the letters. I know my freehand won't be readable by anyone no matter how hard I try. Not all blueprints are orthographic projections of real objects. Some are diagrams that show how systems are connected. Wiring diagrams show wire connections instead of layouts and are drawn using standard symbols which are stenciled with the use of templates. Remember, this is in the days before computer-aided design. Since a ship will have thousands of blueprints, it will be hard to search through all of these every time you need to reference another person's drawing. That's why the title block always includes an index drawing number. Sometimes changes have to be made to a plan after it has been drawn. It may be that the designers change their mind on certain aspects or more details required for the yard workers. These changes are referenced in the revision block. This revision block contains 17 revisions all the way to the letter R. And this letter becomes part of the drawing number so it can show that this plate is alteration R. Some blueprints contain a bill of material, showing the quantities of stock required to complete the work. After the winning shipyard is chosen and the work has begun, revised plans will be drawn. The new plate will include an issue block which shows every entity that received a copy of that print. 
This one shows that the Navy Yard distributed this blueprint on August 3rd of 1942, sending up to five copies to these drafting departments and one to each of these building numbers. It looks like they didn't send this particular plate back to CNR or the Bureau of Ships at the time, but they usually do. It's also common for the Navy to require blueprints to be sent to all shipyards capable of handling that type of vessel in case of future dry docking. So how do you make a blueprint from a drawing? The process depends on the type of blueprint you want to make. The four types of prints you will see are the classic white text on a blue background, black and white prints, ammonia prints with a dark purple over a white background, Van Dykes with white over a dark brown background, and photostat prints. The photostat copying process uses projection. Notice how everything in this print is reversed. This is a photostat negative. Okay, let's say the winning shipyard has been chosen and it's time to start constructing the hull. Even though the CNR blueprints are to scale, the shell expansion plan is too small to just hand over to the plate shop and expect them to start cutting steel. For that we need something called a mold loft. A mold loft is a large room in a shipyard with a completely flat wooden floor, usually on the highest level of a building so it's completely unobstructed by columns or other machinery. The task of the loftsman would be to make a full size drawing of the ship on this floor. Not a scale drawing, but a drawing the actual size of the ship. What they would do is take the table of offsets that created the original shell expansion, convert them to the actual size, which may have already been done by CNR, then fare those lines on the mold loft floor. So how do you fare lines on a mold loft floor? The process is the same as fairing a line on a drawing. They would just use a much bigger piece of wood called a batten and nail it down to the floor in that same curved shape. They would then scribe the same seams as before but on a much larger scale. Lostman would then build wooden frame templates from this work and send them to the plate shop for cutting the actual steel. They would then do the same for the half breadth and height offsets to construct a new half breadth and shear plan on the mold loft floor. All of these drawings would be made in the same mold loft and possibly at the same time, overlapping each other if necessary. After the real offsets are taken from these loftings, they are sanded down and a full size body plan is drawn. Loftsman would then create templates or set bars from these curves to be sent to the Anglesmith shop. I want to briefly touch on ship's framing and how those templates are taken from the mold loft. Draftsmen know the more stations you take, the more accurate the body plan will be. Here is the body plan for the battleship Texas. It contains over 140 frame stations. By lofting this body plan and placing pieces of wood the same thickness of the shell plating, you can create frame templates from inside the body plan. Throughout the process of mold lofting, many modifications are made to the plans in order to make the vessel's construction practical. This is not a practice unique to shipbuilding. For example, here is the blueprints to the first floor of my grandmother's house. Notice it shows a vent on the wall furthest from the garage door. Yet I can assure you, there's no vent there. The vent is on this wall. You see, the heating vents of a house come from ducts that are patched into a much larger duct that runs longitudinally with the house. It would have been impossible to run a duct to this side of the wall because it would run straight through a staircase, and even if you ran it overhead, there would be no way to run the duct between the floor joists. By the way, do you have blueprints to your home? Are they accurate? Leave a comment in the comment section below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. When things like this happen in shipbuilding and you don't have the original drawing, you have to make a tracing of the original. Make your changes and then reference the original. You will see the original CNR number referenced on many blueprints along with the shipyard's drawing and alteration number. Well that's everything you need to know about battleship hull building. This doesn't even go into planning the more complicated parts of a battleship's hull like propeller bossing and shells, skegs, armor plating, stem and bow framing, or rudder construction. If you would like to see videos on that, let me know in the comments section below. In lieu of donations to me, please consider donating to a battleship museum like the Battleship North Carolina. There is a link in the description that will send you to the Friends of the Battleship North Carolina website where you can donate to the nonprofit organization.
Thanks for watching.